Witajcie, witajcie. Marzenie się właśnie spełnia. Oto jestem w Bibliotece Brytyjskiej w Londynie. Zapraszam Was do środka. Tutaj w ścianie są takie duże tablice, na których zostały pokazane różne znaczki z różnych krajów. Chodźcie Wam coś pokażę. Tutaj są rozpisane kraje, z których zostały te znaczki, właśnie tu są znaczki umieszczone w tych tablicach, ale ja pewną tablicę dla Was otworzę i coś Wam chciałbym pokazać. Otwórzmy dwójkę. Zobaczcie, co tutaj jest. Tutaj są również polskie znaczki. Mamy tutaj sekretna poczta Warszawy. Mamy tutaj nie, nieperforowane znaczki również z 1944 roku. Naprawdę tu jest wielka kolekcja, nie musicie nigdzie wchodzić. Na całej ścianie są tablice z różnych krajów i możecie to po prostu pooglądać. Słuchajcie, tutaj jest drukarka. To jest drukarka, drukarnia, gdzie była drukowana właśnie Penny Black. Zwróćcie uwagę, jak ona wygląda. Bardzo stara. Na niej właśnie były drukowane te stare znaczki, które właśnie za chwilę zobaczycie. Penny Black. Słuchajcie, udało się dostać do środka, do środka Wydziału Filatelistyki w Bibliotece Brytyjskiej w Londynie. Jest ze mną Richard, który Wam zaraz poopowiada tutaj o różnych znaczkach, również o tym, który mam tutaj na koszulce, więc zapraszam do oglądania. Hello there, my name is Richard Scott Morrell and I'm one of the curators of the British Library's Philatelic Collections. Uh, the British Library's Philatelic Collections were established in 1891 with the bequest of the Tapping Collection to the British Museum Library. And ever since then we've been acquiring more and more material via gifts, bequests and official government transfers. So that today we house approximately 80 major collections, totaling 8.5 million items, covering uh, the whole world and representing almost every aspect of um, security printing, design and postal history. Uh, I thought I'd show you a, a few bits today. I thought I would um, talk to you all today about the world's first adhesive postage stamps from Great Britain. So there are two collections in particular I want to focus on which are really going to tell us the story of how the world's first adhesive postage stamps were invented. The first collection is the Fletcher Collection uh, which comprises about 341 boxes in total covering the entirety of kind of Britain's public and private posts for a 300 year period from the 17th century through to the early part of the Elizabethan era. Um, so in, before, before the introduction of adhesive postage stamps, the postal system was quite complex, expensive and, and inefficient. Um, the, the, the value of, of, or cost of postage was, was worked out by, by the weight of, of a letter and also the distance covered. And that required quite complex calculations as, as the letter transited from, from its sender to its recipient. Uh, and on top of that, um, the recipient or the, re the person who received the letter normally paid and, and if it cost too much money, uh, they, they might refuse to accept the letter. And of course at that point for the post office, they're losing revenue for work they were working in. And where the calculations were complicated, it became quite easy to kind of um, fiddle the figures, pull a bit of money uh, and, and commit fraud. Um, so I thought I'd show you some of this in action and show you how the, the mechanics of the postal system worked before the introduction of, of Britain's first stamps. So we have here two, uh, one entire and a cover. The first one here is date, dates from um, 1820 and this was a letter uh, addressed to somebody in, in London and uh, when when the letter got there it was given its two pence rate so it cost two pence to, to you know for the recipient to pay to receive the letter but when the letter arrived um 
the recipient is no longer there. So a new address is put in and they have to cancel this rate and they've quite literally crossed it out and then put the cache saying it's not paid and then charged a four, uh, four pence rate uh, which would have been paid on once the uh, person received the letter. You can see there's quite a lot of markings here. It could get quite messy and quite confusing because we've got a lot of Markophily and a lot of stamp marks. So it, you can see it's, it's not a straightforward process. And, and this is quite a long lasting period. And, and um, this, this is another letter, it's a few years later, just prior to the, the introduction of post stamps in 1837. And I've selected this one because it's very local. So this letter itself was originally addressed to uh, a Captain Carson in um, Russell Square, which is right next door to the British Library. And you can see here it's had its top and its right. Uh, and it's been scribbled out because he, he moved down the road near Old Street, near City Road. So again, it's been redirected. The rates quite literally scribbled out on this occasion and the new rates put in. So you can see quite complex, rather, rather inefficient. And of course, by the time this letter would have arrived at four pence, the, the person might have turned around and said, yeah, I don't want it or not interested, at which point the, the, the post postman would have wasted their their journey and resource so um, over the 19th century around the period that the second letter was sent uh, there was increasing public calls and political calls for postal reform and a, a, a particular individual known to posterity as Sir Roland Hill uh, pr proposed or submitted the idea of introducing a prepaid postage stamp and a, a kind of postal stationary wrapper to wrap a letter in, a, a precursor to an envelope, were, were created uh, at a, a penny rate and a tuppenny rate for the, for the conveyance of mail. So what we've seen on the last two covers is how complex and, and how, how inefficient the postal system was before the introduction of his adhesive, adhesive postage stamps in Britain. The covers themselves are full of markings and scribblings and it's great fun for postal historians to work out those rates and routes from, from that material. Nevertheless, it is complex and it is confusing, which makes it easy for people to kind of pocket some of the money, be a bit corrupt, uh, and also the cost involved, not to mention the, the waste of, of all that effort to deliver a letter only for the recipient to refuse to receive it, so, you know, due to the high cost. That led to calls in the UK, in, in the public and in the political sphere, for postal reform. How, how would the country set about making its postal system more cost effective for Britain's in burgeoning industrial economy and also more efficient for the government in terms of its revenue? And one man, Roland Hill, proposed a, quite, a, quite an, a simple yet revolutionary idea, the introduction of a prepaid adhesive postage stamp and, and a, a sheet to wrap a letter in, a precursor to an envelope, uh, at a uniform rate of postage. Um, this, this proposal was submitted to the government on the 13th of February 1837 and, and they said to him, you know, run with the idea. So he, he gathered up with a gentleman called Henry Cole and the two together announced a public competition to design these kind of stamps and covers, which is known to posterity as the, the Treasury Competition. And what, what our collection, the Fletcher Collection actually has, it has a range of some of these, these, um, these design proposals or essays. In total, 2,600 were submitted, none of which were deemed um, appropriate for the final, for the final um, stamp. Yet they're still an important part of that story. And, and here we have two examples. We have uh, some essays by Charles Whiting uh, and um, showing how the adhesive stamps uh, would have looked. And, and as you'd expect, there's a, a postal rate. You know, it's on the side um, information there for the for the uh, kind of weight. Um, and they they they're using a. Uh, you know, a range of engraving techniques, so very similar to kind of stuff that was produced by the stamp office at the time visually. And then moving along, we have here the um, other examples, and it's important to remember these are security features as such. So 
the idea behind these complex um, engine toolings and, and designs is that it will be very because stamps will have a monetary value. The idea is to make them as as difficult as possible to counterfeit, um, so that you can you can commit fraud and, and, and make money. A bit like counterfeiting money, in a way. Um, and that's something we could return to later. Anyway, they were rejected and the future stamp design was loosely based on a sketch by Hill and Hill then um, set about um, preparing uh, the what would eventually become known to us as, as the as the penny black and tuppenny blue stamps so why don't we have a look at some of those um, based loosely on on William Hill's own sketch rather than the treasury essays it was decided for the that the adhesive postage stamp should have the portrait of Queen Victoria face being easily recognizable and easy to spot variations in um, so designs were developed based on a City of London medal created by the engraver William Wyon uh, and the medal itself, the, the, the cameo of, of uh, profile portrait of Victoria was, was widely recognised and it was highly praised, the, the craftsmanship of the work and based on that um, Charles and, and Frederick Heath uh, developed a, a kind of essay uh, and or, or an engraving of that and then the American Anglo-American printing firm Perkins Bacon were commissioned to produce the, the stamp. So we, we could have a quick look at some of those designs now. So let, let's have a look at the, the stamps themselves and, and talk a bit about them. So I'm going to show you um, a set of them from our foundation collection, the Tapping Collection. Uh, that's a worldwide collection of postage stamps, telegraph stamps and postal stationery. Uh, from the introduction of, of adhesive postage stamps in 1840 right the way through to his untimely death in 1891. And we have here one of the pages for, for Britain, which of course was the country that invented the, the first adhesive postage stamps. And we have here various examples of, of the, the, the most iconic stamp, the, the Penny Black. And here we could see um, the, the Heath portrait of Victoria um, that was that was um, based on the medal we've just discussed, uh, and these were recess recess um, printed by Perkins Bacon Pitch, uh, and Company. The company itself, the one of the founders of the company, um, was an American who migrated to the UK in 1815 in the hopes of winning the uh, banknote, Bank of England uh, banknote printing contract. He didn't print it but um, he was an inventor and one of the things he developed was a, a, a specialised form of intaglio engraving for security printing and we have here some of the lovely features of that so we, we've got in the background of the, of the of the Queen's portrait you'll notice the the very fine pattern work this is this is um, unique um, it, it's a unique signature that that was very hard to um, it was mechanically created so it was very hard to, to forge it by hand uh, you'll notice um, at the bottom here we have um, letter numbers um, and these uh, you've got to remember there's a monetary value to them they were printed in, in sheets totaling 240 stamps so a sheet of stamps a lot of money in as a way to counterfeit, uh, as a way to stop counterfeiters, uh, these these control let letters are placed in to place whereabouts on the sheet each each stamp is. Now, because of the quantities um, of these stamps being printed. Um, more than one plate was created. In fact, for the for the penny black, um, there were eleven. The, the first plate was heavily retouched. It's essentially a a different plate, um, and they were used to to mass reproduce the stamps. Now, you'll notice, unlike modern stamps, there's no there's no perforation on the side. So these were in sheets, and they had to be physically cut out 
by um, the, the post office official. By scissors. By scissors, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, now, um, they're known as adhesive postage stamps because there was gum on the back and, you, you know, you'd lick it on uh, and apply it to your, to your, um, to your letter. So in addition to the, the penny black, uh, a, a second uh, stamp of a higher denomination was also issued, and that was the uh, two penny or twopenny blue. Uh, these are actually later examples from the Fletcher collection of that stamp. So unlike the, 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 the penny black, which was um, in, in perforate, this actually has a perforation, it's much more recognizable as a stamp because of that perforation. But, but th this particular set of stamps, although the designs are uh, similar, these were printed sometime later in, uh, between 1858 and 1879. Uh, but I, I'm showing you these because it, it gives you the idea of the design and you can see the, the, the basic layout. So while we were looking at the penny black, you may have heard me use the term plate number. Because of the numbers of, of stamps that were required for the postal service, you needed more than one printing plate to meet the demand. Uh, and as a, as a result of that, uh, the value of, of a, stamp, a, a stamp collector's penny, penny red or penny black or tuppenny blue will vary according to the, the plate number. Now, one of my favorite parts of the Fletcher collection um, which is immense, are, are these. The, these are a, a small selection of some of his plate reconstructions. Um, the, the, the one on the right being for the plate 1A because the, the first plate was heavily retouched for, the, for part of the penny black and you can see the effort he's put in to um, work these up. Now you'll notice in the background that the these are used stamps, these were removed and these went through the postal service and you'll notice on them a range of red which will be quite obvious on the camera like here uh, and, and, and black which is less visible um, cancellations or Maltese cross shapes and, and these were used to cancel the stamp, right? it's been used so you can't cut it off or soak it off and reuse it as a, you know, a way to prevent forgery. So bear that in mind for, for later. But you can see here how the control letters run in sequence, and you begin to see um, how that how that works in, in enabling the plate reconstruction. And um, there are several collectors who reconstructed plates like this, people like Nissan and, and so on. Um, but we're lucky enough to have you know Fletcher's set, which is which is pretty cool and amazing, I think. So the 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 Great Britain penny black and and tuppenny blue were released for sale in May 1840 and and began to enter the the postal system for, for use and we saw in the last plate the, the plates from the Fletcher collection how many of them had Maltese crosses stamped on over the design in, in black and red inks. Now there, there was there was a, a bit of an unforeseen problem um, with with the penny penny black in particular uh, the, the black cancellation stamp uh, to, to cancel cancel its value so it couldn't be reused. Um, it was really, really difficult to spot a black coloured cancellation on a black coloured stamp. Yes. Uh, and, and that caused a bit of a problem for the Postal Service. Uh, and of course the 50 Victorians, they, they, they like try and washing off the, the cancellation marks to reuse them. So they have to kind of semi go back to the drawing board and just nine months later they have to issue essentially what is a penny black but in an entirely new colour, which we have some of them here. Um, I'm going to take it out of the sleeve so that there's no reflection. Um, and these, these were introduced in, in 1841 and the, um, the they're known as the penny red. Mm -hmm. uh, we have so th these are, these are uh, unused examples here. You'll notice that like the, the design is initially the same as the penny black. We've got the, the crosses at the top corners with the with the letter control number underneath, the portraits the same, and so on. Now this stamp was incredibly, incredibly long lasting. And and I if, if memory serves, um that they well, they, they were introduced in 1841, they actually finished um issuing them in 1879, by which point, you know, that 38 year period 
21 billion of these stamps yes, were, yes. Were, were printed. <laughs> Um, and and there, are, there are kind of three periods of development here. So the first period is uh, the period from kind of 1841 to 1854. And uh, like I say, like the, like the Penny Black, um, they're, they're imperforated. And initially, they initially use seven of the, of the 11 um, Penny Black printing plates for them. Um, by 1850... Uh, because it would take a postal official time to cut the stamps apart with scissors for sale, for efficiency, the idea was to introduce, um, to perforate them. Yes, yes. Um, and, and we have a period where we get the archer perforations. Um, these are in perf, but um, later on we can look at some perforated examples. And, and by, by kind of um, 1858, um, the perforations are brought in, but but the stamp itself is redesigned. And what happens? There are several things that happen here. Um, so on the top stamps of this page, you'll notice at the top left and right hand corner mm -hmm. we've got these Maltese crosses. Uh, by the final phase, you'll notice on the design, just lower down on the page, that these these um, Maltese crosses have, have been replaced with um, with letters. So you've got letters in all four corners rather than just two. In addition to this. Um, they introduce, and sadly we can't see it to the naked eye, so you'll have to take my word for it, but in the left and right hand margin on each side um, are the plate numbers. Yes, yes, for example, yeah. 744. Precisely, all mm -hmm. the different numbers. And, and um, we've got here, so you'll notice that in the Taplin collection there have been plates as someone's worked through them, and, and you know, on the bottom here we have the plate 76 and the, the, the date of issue. And it's based on these numbers here. Mm -hmm. Now, the value of a penny red can can um, change wildly from a few few pound up depends to, on the plate. Uh, yeah, you know, a hundred odd, hundreds of thousand mm -hmm. pound, depending on the plate number. So, get looking in those margins, people. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's quickly recap on what we've looked at. We've we've looked at why post adhesive postage stamps were needed. We've looked at some of the design and manufacturing points and, and we've talked a bit about um, some of the issues that arose with, with the introduction um, of penny, you know, penny blacks which led to the creation of penny reds. Um, it only seems apt to me now that we kind of finish up looking at how they went into the postal system. So I'm kind of going to shift a bit away from the philatelic aspect of these amazing stamps and look at the postal history side. And I thought I would show you, again from the Fletcher collection, a range of these stamps used on cover. But not just any covers. These are covers with penny blacks, tuppenny uh, blues and penny reds that were sent from the Duke of Wellington to various people uh, between 1841 and 1842. Now the British know Wellington from the Battle of Waterloo and his defeat of Napoleon. He was a prime minister and a statesman. Um, and there's a really nice piece of postal history here, not just for Britain, but for Europe as a whole. Super. And you can see how much tidy the envelopes already are. You can see the, um, the, how, the, how they've been used, the different types of cancellations and the stamps in use. Um, and these are, you know, this shows how central the postal service is to, um, you know, the whole of human civilized, modern human civilization and culture. So, one of the frustrating things being a philatelic curator, and I, I hear this a lot from family, friends, colleagues, is, you know, that, that philately is very pale, male and frail, i.e. it's only rich old white men that collect, and actually nothing could be further from the truth. Um, from the very earliest days of stamp collecting and philately, women have been punching above their weight. They may be a smaller part of our community, but they've always been there, and I want to show you a major rarity um, from the Fitzgerald collection, which is a collection of pioneer airmail of the world formed by uh, a female philatelist known as Fitzgerald. And, and what we have here for you today is, is one of our major treasures. This is the USA 1918 airmail 24 cent blue and carmine error 
um, center inverted or also known as the inverted jenny named after the the um, plane depicted um, in the stamp uh, it's a stamp valued at well in excess of I think it's 1.5 million US dollars um, it was it was um, a recess printed stamp um, on, on two plates that had to go through the printing press twice for each part for first for the you know one for each color and and on the on the second print in with the, with the vignette the vignette was the sheet was put in the wrong way hence the mm -hmm. the inverted the inverted plane the plane is inverted or the stamp is inverted uh i think it's the center inverted so it's the mm -hmm. plane inverted mm -hmm. not not the stamp um this is actually one of my earliest memories childhood memories of, of a stamp actually um is this stamp uh anyone who's a a child of the 70s 80s is like me uh, may recall uh, an American film called Brewster's Millions uh, with the comedian Richard Pryor who has to spend uh, £30 million in a calendar month with showing no assets uh, to inherit several billion pound and he, he invests his money on, on things that will, that will not return you know, he's got to waste the money basically and, and he, he invests in crazy things that just end up bringing him more money and during the course of this film, he buys an inverted Jenny from a philatelic shop in America. And at this point, um, you know, the, the people who are setting up, uh, want him to fail in this so they could get the money for their business, turn around and go, well, he's made a mistake. That's an, F an asset. So he's failed the term. And of course, there's that, there's that funny scene where he sends them a, a postcard uh, on which he u he uses his inverted Jenny and effectively destroys its value. Um, and that was one of my earliest memories of this stamp. So to actually, all these years later, um, having gotten into philately, to, to be um, lucky enough to to be responsible for looking after one of them, it really is a, a quite an amazing experience. Mam nadzieję, że równie miło spędziliście czas jak ja. Widzicie ile informacji można się dowiedzieć ciekawych przyjeżdżając w miejsce, gdzie jest dużo tej informacji. Ja musiałem sobie założyć kartę biblioteczną, żeby móc tu w ogóle wejść. Także już mogę teraz z biblioteki londyńskiej wypożyczać książki. No oczywiście, że z Warszawy nie będę przyjeżdżał, ale kartę musiałem wyrobić. Słuchajcie, to wszystko. Dziękuję bardzo Wam za oglądanie. Mam nadzieję, że ta wiedza y, będzie dla Was ciekawa. Komentujcie, zapraszam do oglądania kolejnych filmików, do lajkowania, do subskrybowania kanału. Mam parę pomysłów jeszcze na takie podróże różne. Także do zobaczenia!